Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to the non-Muslim. Inshallah, I'm going to explain a little bit on multiple intelligence. Um, this is part of the syllabus. Uh, all right. So when it comes to multiple intelligence, it is uh, developed by the theory came first uh, from the initiative of uh, Howard Gardner. It was a long time ago. I think if I'm not mistaken, during 1980s. All right. So before I proceed with uh, more content related to the multiple intelligence, all right, let us discuss a little bit on the direct expressions. Um, as we all know, multiple intelligence is the antithesis of the direct instructions, all right? Like what we have nowadays in our classroom, we have a directions where where we actually teach, use, we teach using direct instructions, which is direct instruction means like a normal interaction, normal daily teaching and learning at classroom, all right? So this direct instruction has a correlation with a banking concept of teaching. Um, it is a it is a teacher directed. It's a teacher centered. Okay, usually teacher stands in front of the classroom and then give a lecture or present the information. So I say that it is a, con a banking concept of teaching where when the when the teachers uh, give a lecture give lectures they actually convey the information and the students have to listen uh, either they understand it or not they have to listen feel the information uh, inside their brain then take down jot down the notes um, do necessary things as what the students should do right so during the examination time, they have to withdraw the information, vomit out everything. So it has a similarity with a banking concept of education. For example, when you go to the bank, you deposit the money for certain for for certain for certain times, and after some time, you take out the money. The same thing. All right. So in a way, uh, it is not meaningful because. The students somehow somehow could not could not um, actually uh, develop their own understandings or contribute to the process of teaching, All right? So, and my thesis is that uh, I want you to understand that uh, direct instruction direct instruction actually does not fit with multiple intelligence. Okay, why is that? First, uh, learning must be authentic, it must be real, it must be on time, okay, uh, it must have some connection with the students so that the students can put their contacts, you can put um, your contacts into your classroom. So, even though, for example, there might be some of the lecturers who are teaching a uh, similar subject that what, with what you are teaching, but the context of that lectures are totally different because the students are different, even though the content might be the same. Right, so I'm talking about the context here. And then learning is authentic when it is meaningful. Meaningful if it, if it makes sense to the student, if it fits into the student's identity or student's life. And then multiple intelligence actually um, understand, have a thesis, have the understanding that students actually learn differently and this is when it comes into the play. Okay. So, direct instructions, uh, if you would like to compare with multiple intelligence, direct instruction actually is boring because it is scripted from A to Z, sorry, from A to B, B to C, C to D, step by step, it's very parallel, all right? And the students usually rarely interrupt, they listen actively or passively, all right? Usually they listen passively, Usually, it is most in the form of a lecture. So, it limits students' creativity, uh, teachers' creativity as well. Alright. And then, uh, usually, um, direct instruction depends so much on the textbooks. Alright. You need to have a textbook because textbooks is, is actually the guidelines that the students read from the, and the students have to listen. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's go into the multiple intelligence. I just put it there as an MI. Okay, so multiple intelligence actually fit into the diverse diverse ways of how students retrieve 
or learn or get the information from the teachers. All right. So the other benefit of the multiple intelligence is that because of teachers actually teach according to the students' diversity, to the students' complexity, to the students' uh, context just now. So teacher actually has to diversify uh, the many kind, many types of pedagogies, many ways of teaching methods, and because of this multiple intelligence thingy, multiple intelligence intelligence thingy, pedagogy and teaching can be improved and evolved. Because, as what I told you before, our teaching need to be adapt to the student's environment. And at the same time, this multiple intelligence actually fit into brain advancement of brain research. So that we know that the brain is complex structure, it has many complex things uh, uh, inside, uh, on our brains, and, and functions differently. So, based on these variations of intelligence, we know that, and then we know that, uh, we know that, um, that we need to always improvise, uh, we need to always uh, Mm, provide uh, non-traditional methods to our students, right? So now the students do not have to memorize anymore. For example, I give you an example. The students don't have to memorize anymore. The facts now stored inside the brain. It becomes it's not uh, just a memory. It becomes part of the students uh, where they actually can make it uh, authentic and personal, so that it fits into. Their, their their life or their self okay okay i'll give you the example when i mentioned about the diversity of the learners uh, i always explain about the, the three types of learners actually they are auditory uh, they are visual they learn through visual and that some of them learn through uh, kinesthetic by doing it all right by doing the activities itself that, that they, they could learn all right but uh not but okay and the good thing about this uh, mi this MI actually has more than this, okay, have more than this, all right. So it actually make it very specific to few dimensions, all right. I'm going to explain that later on, all right. And then this actually fits into each child learns differently. So it goes back to this, okay. It goes back to the constructivist ideas of learning. It must be real, context, meaningful, meaningful when it actually uh when it, when it is actually fit into the facts that child learns differently okay so some people say multiple intelligence has eight uh, it was in 1980s so this idea is ancient but still applicable up to today's all right and some people nowadays i think mentions nine or maybe more or some people actually produce um Another di dimensions of uh, intelligence, for example, they call it uh, EI, EI or emotional intelligence. Yeah. Right. Some of them start produce a creative intelligence, even though they might might. The, the 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 academician those, those academicians that created this this term actually maybe uh, put it in a different way okay but to me the idea is good i like the idea it's creative it's, it's powerful all right even though some argue that it, it is some argue that the 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 howard garner idea is actually uh lack of uh research to prove that it actually works into the field of psychology. All right, regardless of that, okay. So let let us look at these this this eight areas or nine areas of of the multiple intelligence, okay. So that we can benefit from this discussion. Okay, the first one is linguistic, the heightened capacity for using words and language, right? So basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, actually, these eight multiple intelligence, all of us actually have all of us actually has it have it 
Alright? You actually have it. It's either it's strong in you or not. Some of them might be strong in you, some of not some some of them might not. Okay, so it depends. Which is uh, more dominant. Which which one of these are more dominant in you? Eh? Linguistic the heightened capacity of for using words and languages. Usually you can see this those who have this uh, intelligence they are very good with they are very good with words and languages. For example, they can produce poem, they can produce uh, powerful lyrics, this kind of stuff. All right. Uh, mathematical, logical, the enhanced capacity for numerical or logical patterns. All right. So what happened nowadays? Most of the assessment at schools actually we actually focus on this. All right. We actually focus on this. The enhanced capacity for numerical logical patterns, or a little bit on linguistics. All right. Or maybe for 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 sports, we have a special and bodily kinesthetic. But for example, the SPM, the STPM, they actually look into this. All right. The elements of this. All right. So the natural state, the capacity of understanding of nature or biology well. Okay, for those who have this kind of multiple intelligence, let's say that you are lost in the forest, alright? So those who have a naturalistic intelligence, they actually uh, adapt to the environment very well and perhaps they can get out from the forest easily compared to those who have, who are lack in terms of this naturalistic intelligence. Alright, then we have a special, heightened abilities and manipulations of the visual special. Okay, uh, I remember about the Tetris game. Alright, Tetris game, I think all of us played that a long time ago. Alright, a bodily kinesthetic, the well developed skill of physical movement among the sportsmen. Okay, the ballet dancer, for example, or musical, the enhanced capacity to, to discern rhythms and patterns, musicians. Okay, interpersonal, the heightened ability to understand and respond to others. Huh? Okay, let me let me go back again. Even the musical, those who have the capability to mengaji or, or read the Quran taranamli with the taranum, right? Perhaps they have this ability as well. Eh? Alright. I think it has high and low tone. I don't know what music. I don't know much. I'm not good at music. Alright, and interpersonal, the heightened ability to understand and respond to others. Okay, this is what makes you a good counselor. Okay, a good listener. Interpersonal understandings of one's own emotional strengths. Okay, so these are the multiple intelligence that they have nowadays and a long time ago. They might probably have more, so it depends on the what books or what scholars that you follow. Alright, so again, all of us have them, alright, but some are strong in certain aspects, we can other aspects. If teachers can determine or know the intelligence in each child, Okay, and then teach to those enhanced ability, and then teach to those enhanced abilities. The child will learn better. Okay, because we actually fully manipulate or fully concentrate on what the strengths are, and then we we fully try to 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 to, to expand on that. So, so and then this actually fits into into the students. All right. Okay, next thing is that do we really measure intelligence successfully? Um, we have the IQ test, even though the IQ test claim that they actually measure every aspect of intelligence. But I don't think so. If you look into the musical, for example, uh, being able to play musical instruments are totally different than being able to read musical notes. And I assume in IQ test related, in IQ test basically is more on cognitive. All right, it's not about skills. Okay, so so let's say that you attended a concert and a concert music concert, right? And then you saw the musicians play the instruments, and then you say that okay, this guy, this this bunch of guys actually they are very good in terms of uh, their musical their musical ability because they, are, they have this enhanced capacity to discern rhythms and patterns. That's why they become musicians. Okay. Even though that is your argument, but you have to remember there are some other other stuff that involve huh? 
That's why I wrote it there. We test and consider those who play well, any musical instruments, have musical intelligence. But but we forget or you know our musical in- intelligence when playing a uh, play piano. But that as well involve corporal intelligence to strike the keys. Okay, okay, to coordinate actually with your fingers, the rhythm, with the timing, or with the with the to coordinate with your personal intelligence. Uh, in order to communicate the feelings, eh? for example, if you um, there are some singers while they are singing, they're crying. Uh, this actually uh, the ability to communicate to understand uh, feelings, and when they are crying, and uh, those who are listen to their song actually cry together. You see this kind of intelligence as well. All right, so that's why. When it comes to uh, measuring intelligence successfully, I hi- I highly doubt that even though that I do not deny that uh, there are some validity in terms of uh, IQ tests, but to say that they actually measure successfully overall in overall dimension or perspective, they are not. All right, okay. So how to put it? into a reality how to fully use of it even though that you have a different kind of students inside your classroom okay how to heighten the 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 applications in terms of teaching okay uh, at the end of the day this is just a theory eh? okay let's look into this huh? how to test them for biophysics or maths teacher okay because they involve lots of naturalist naturalist intelligence right Ask students to observe why some objects sink or some float. Okay. While doing that, you have to remember that the students need to have critical thinking as well. Because they need to be aware of the relationship. Why actually some object could sink and why some ob- some objects actually float. Like for example, ice. So the students, you need to actually prepare the student to being able to justify this is actually how to fully utilize this, this this multiple intelligence into into teaching, and then the student need to have this accurate observation. In order to achieve that accurate observations, the students need to know what to do. And accurate observations, for example, while you are doing any experiments in the lab, you need to have a checklist so that you could observe while doing these experiments what kind of reaction. That the students could see. The students need as well to know to test the hypothesis that they produce before they do the experiments, right? Okay, this one example. Okay, let's look into the visual spatial intelligence. Okay, perhaps for the art class, or even maybe for maths, right? Because I I I give examples two exa- three examples there. How to create unicorn, right? Unicorn is a non-existent animal. It's just an imaginary. How to create that? Out of nowhere. Alright? And the, the fact that the students could uh, came out with uh, descriptions with um, functions of every physical parts of the unicorns that actually tells something about the students, right? And then how to imagine a graph based on the differentiation, for example. Okay, how to transfer that graph into tangible product so that the students who are who are weak in terms of visual special intelligence or kinesthetic students actually could be able to make sense of whatever that you are teaching. So in terms of exploration, it's more on the design things and then the elements of artistic to beautify the drawings. Uh, so that the graph really looks like a graph. It doesn't look like an egg, for example. Alright? Okay. Okay, this is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Uh, this is specific to Chico Gaddafi or who teach music. Alright? Listen to a rhythm. At the same time, the students have to be aware of to produce some creative movement while clapping. They need to be aware of rhythm and coordination of the body. Alright? So, all of that needs different kind of multiple intelligence, eh? not just one. 
That's why I say, even though you think that the students is is measuring or have the strengths in that, but to 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 actually to be able to do that, these are the things. These are the element. These are the other other elements that you need to be aware of. For example, I mentioned there sensitivity to rhythm, the productions of ideas to produce a, a creative or interesting coordinations or rhyming or jumping I don't know okay for example imagination nari secara secara lemah lembut macam ikan arowana berenang I won't be able to do that it's, it's not my it's, it's not my intelligence I don't have that alright okay so these are the things when it comes to multiple intelligence that I hope you could benefit alright perhaps you can have this discussion on this Saturday yeah? about these few topics that I already highlighted Right. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.